What is that sound is very, very, very difficult to say. It's the sound, you know. It's not, it's not the music. The music we already know. I personally get finicky when people call us fusion. That's it. Just a touch. It will be difficult uh, to explain contemporary Carnatic because you can easily get categorized into fusion rock. It's not metal. It is this amalgamated, shaken but not stirred sort of mixture that contemporary Indian music. <laughs> hello, check. Check. Hey, hey. Thoda aur. Hello, hello, hello. Check. Monitor mein thoda sa dena. There's no chance of me able, me being able to tell you or anybody being able to tell you what Indian Ocean sounds like. They're folk. No, then they said they're rock. No. So everybody would try and find terms for us. We gave up. To be able to find a sound of their own is something which cannot be taught. It has to come from within. Swaratma's music is the sound of India. One, two, three. Just like what India's youth is today. Honest expression of a collective emotion. perspectives come together and when we manage to create a balance between them, that's what makes Yodhakas music. Hundred percent true, loud and lusty. Lusty, I don't know what that means, uh, but definitely earthy. is breeding at, at the time that you're living in. What we do is take diverse styles of music, play them together. I come from a classical music background. But the uh, thing is, since I play guitar, so then I said, how do I interpret my Indian classical music on, on the guitar? I want to create a new song, Naga Folk Blues. And what is Naga Folk Blues? Oh, this, this is different. The Indian sound which has now started to come up and it will come up from other bands also. The idea is just to have something very soulful and that can, you know, kind of connect with your audience and for ourselves as musicians.
music is a form of expression a form of expression which is definitely not through the normal language that we speak rock carnatic experimental i think agam is a mixture of all three agam means the inner self music comes from within so we thought maybe it makes sense om kanaram twa ganapati gumba vamahe kavim kavinam upamashavastavam cheshta rajam brahmanam brahmanas pad arashran vanro dibihi sida sadanam om kanaram twa ganapati gumba vamahe kavim kavinam upamashavastavam Our tunes are uh, completely based on a single raga. We don't try to mix ragas. Most of the times we take a melody which is uh, based on Indian classical ragas, and then we start um, experimenting on that. so we thought okay let's retain the carnatic aspect of the music and by retaining that let's bring our own metal or rock flavor or the south indian instrument flavor not necessarily just rock but it also uh, brought in elements of funk uh, blues and uh, a little bit of jazz as well <laughs> try to bring in western into carnatic or carnatic into western so i do the carnatic music and then you know uh, as you move forward it actually converges at, at a point where you actually think this should have been together i mean it should have been always together <laughs> taking carnatic music and doing western or you know any other you know contrasting or complementing style of music is actually fairly seamless it it, it happens in in classical uh, rhythm patterns are so amazingly complicated okay i don't think uh, mathematically also you can decipher how the hell a human being is being able to uh, render a beat pattern like that okay but they do in in classical music is very scale based music The fundamental of western music is that you can stack more than one note on top of each other like a durga rag a durga rag would go something like this so we give a lot of importance to these uh, uh notes in that particular rag relevant to that rag and then create a melody over it and you know and then solo over that that is when a true essence of a rag comes out sometimes you can get lucky enough that the tune that you are making can work both ways like an indian classical approach and a western uh, harmony harmony based approach and you can infuse both of them into one song but sometimes it doesn't happen sometimes it, it just naturally does not let you do, go that way it's it's a nice idea when you kind of blend the two because you kind of taking the best of both worlds
Sonata's music to me is 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 that expression of um, emotion between six creative partners. You are a performer of the music that you have practiced, of the music that you have composed, of the songs. Um, so you are just a medium on stage from what you have already created. <laughs> I discovered my love for music um, when we bought a, a music system which had, which had uh, two cassette uh, decks which meant that I could borrow a cassette and create a copy and keep that copy for myself. Our music is not folk music. Just we just use elements of folk, elements of rock, elements of Indian classical, elements of you know jazz and other forms of music. We believe you take the elements and bring it to the people in a way that they can understand and hear stories of what's happening now. Most of the times, the ideas or the feeling what we get with that sound just coincides. Then putting lyrics just happens very easily. The issues are always stuff that we feel are around us, are affecting us, and which turns into an expression, and so it's a song. If we can have a visual memory imbibed in our viewers' minds, um, which goes well with our sound, I think then we can connect better. So you are part of evolution. Somewhere you have to be grounded, somewhere you also have to stretch to grow. It doesn't matter what language you're singing in. It really doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter that you don't understand what I'm saying in the in the words, as long as you get what I'm saying in my body language and in the music. I always think that musicians are musicians should be like water. Like you can put them in any vessel and they can take part of that. We have grown up listening to Hindi film music, Indian folk music, some Indian classical music and whatever. So the the rhythm structures that we use in our local music, folk music or other music, they are not alien at all to us. If you're really doing music the way you love to do it, it means that your psyche is coming out. And somebody is always appreciating the fact that you are actually allowing yourself to be yourself.
possible. So it's possible to stand your own ground, you know, uh, follow your own inner voice and uh, and not really listen to too many people who are telling you to do different things. It becomes like a, like a melting pot of genres, of influences, of feelings that the band members are feeling at, at, at that point in time. If you find yourself in whatever you are doing, you know, in any kind of music, and you think that you are making sense, then it's perfectly fine. Uh, even when we are playing Western instruments like drums and bass and guitar, I don't think we, all of us are playing them exactly in the Western way. Um, I think my guitar style has a lot of influence of Indian classical and folk. You have the East India Company, which is a band which is uh, post-colonial in the sense that it is showing an awareness of our history and yet having, willing to have fun with it. That, uh, yeah, so what? Now this is the East India This is us. We're from Ahom and we'll do Ahomia music and we'll do Ahomia folk and we'll bring electronica into it. In the last few years, what we have seen is an increasing number of bands and individuals starting to sing and compose music in their own languages as bands. For us, it, uh, the art form always keeps evolving. It's, it's more like a conversation, like how I, I, how I answer your question. We've been working with uh, traditional slokams. Also, we work with ancient uh, writings from the folk singers. Uh, I mean, we never claim to say that, okay, this is what we've come up with. We always uh, feel that this is our expression to that. The name Yodaka itself happens to be a Sanskrit uh, name and it means uh, warriors. Shwetam Bharataram Devi Shweta Gandhanu Lepita Vandeham Sharadham Nityam Shweta Padmasanam Shubha after uh, uh, performing Yodaka for two years with all random world music uh, songs and a little bit of Carnatic with drums and distortion guitars and all that, personally, uh, to be honest, I was bored doing that. So that's when no, we decided, why can't we use Sanskrit? All the shlokams are so musical and it's, it's on meter. It fits on any kind of tune, no, as long as you understand how it flows. So what we have tried to do is take, take all those chants and not distort the ideas and uh, the feel of the chant and the sound of the chant. We were very strong that we are going to do Indian music, the, but the elements that are going to come in are the ones from around. We also work together on another project. Uh, it's also a performing band. It's called La Pongal. That 
that's like an interesting thing for us to see how folk music sounds in a rock band setup. It sounded really good for me with the raw folk performance and what I could hear in my head. It was such a it was such a great uh, like combination of this contemporary instruments and and the folk uh, melody. <laughs> We've tried our best to keep the aesthetics of folk music so strong that if you listen to it, you would say, okay, this is folk music. The traditional Indian instrument and the Western instrument aren't very different at all. They are both musical instruments. They both create music. Let me show you this folk instrument. This is we call tindila. <laughs> The youngster mindset is the folk instruments cannot play to the modern instrument. But see, I try to put and make it between the nerves, up down. Then I can play with any instrument. So I may be playing the bass guitar and I may be holding down a, um, a western groove but there are still points of confluence where it doesn't matter where the instrument is, is from, where the instrument you're playing is from, it's still going to come and, and say hello. I tune it more like an Indian instrumentalist would tune it. And uh, so yeah, so it gives a, you know, a beautiful drone and it's very sitar-like or a, the, like a sarod-like, you know. But to me, I felt the need of changing my tuning to, to be a little more authentic. Now you have Kadri Gopalan playing saxophone. He's playing the sax, he's playing an alto sax, but he's playing Carnatic. So the instrument is not what uh, pushes, it's this. Indian Ocean started off in 1990. And we started doing just our own music, using a lot of folk and classical influences. But yet, because we were contemporary people in cities, so we were listening to rock and jazz and reggae and all that came into our music. But something very Indian emerged, 
influenced by the, so you can say rooted in india but global in its appeal follow chord patterns we go by the indian way of uh, following scales and uh, the minute you start playing in scales with a slightly indian rhythm it's amazing that immediately you start sounding indian I may have played something four years back in a song, which is also recorded and gone. But we will keep changing it till the time it's completely at ease with itself. And I I don't feel that I'm straining any muscle in my body while playing it. composition has to have a particular flow it has to tell a story let's say something comes to my head and i'm singing it whatever it may be now the way oshim is seeing it is i don't know how so he may let's say he may be thinking of it from the way he's heard music in the 70s suppose suppose and sushmit suddenly hears that and he says oh I'm feeling like playing something classical at that point. And Raul is hearing something at the same time and he thinks something more reggae-ish at the same time. And I think that's roughly what used to happen. Everybody would pull the things that we were making towards their own little influences and uh, just as a hodgepodge ho jata folk music just has a way of sounding folky there's that spirit in folk music that you can't find in some other sort of music sometimes i start learning folk music folk songs from the old guys many people ask me we need to save our culture we need to save our culture i ask them very humble humbly if you want to save our culture our folk should be reshaped and polished and mixed and to make it contemporary ka how te ka how te chum me chita lo of course there is that traditional music there is that folk music there is nothing wrong in creating your own form of music using elements from here 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 hawa hai Then when you see something that East India Company does, when Papun sings his Bihu, he grew up with Bihu. The Bihu is part; it's within his body. When he sings Bihu, his whole body moves. with you the audience starts moving because he is moving o chalan mati dhori amar aao When 
it comes from there then the folk music will start becoming more and more interesting if you ask me that okay we are giving you a musical path and how would you walk on that so i would walk the way i've been taught to walk you know Advaita, we try and make sure that we give the first priority to the song rather than our own playing. for that matter will work in a particular song you know it's just eight minds coming together and everybody is bringing in their own instruments their the vocal abilities and uh, suddenly come up with this idea it could be a melodic line or a set of few lines or just a groove <laughs> We did Ghir Ghir, we did Gorak. These songs are like pure old uh, compositions in particular rag. So we've used those, uh, you know, compositions and we've done it in such a way that it complements, you know, the Western elements when they come in. Vetans uh, think that that a song is always bigger than the musician at that point of time because we are eight of us working on that plot, working on that song, and trying to make that song sound like eight of us together. At a personal level. It's not only Western or Indian. It's about the people who are, you know, who are, you know, uh, you know, they they find it, you know, a common ground. If you really want to have expression absolutely free flowing, you have to let your mind loose. Fusion is not about just bringing in musicians, bringing all these instruments and play it together. Fusion is in the minds.
have to be open enough in your mind to let other form of music come and blend with your mindset of music so i guess fusion happens then when we were doing the first album we almost consciously tried to make it sound not like an indian band <laughs> and uh, you know we wanted to put out an album that was international rock in that particular sense and then when we started touring with the first album these elements used to start creeping inside and then after some time we realized that you know that was the fun part of it all these rural melodies and juxtaposed it with very very intense energy and and it was very nice to see recently we had this young fan of us you know and he was standing there in head bang next to him it was his dad standing there <laughs> and the best part it was uh, the young little boy he was also painted up <laughs> and he got his dad to paint his face into half you know and that's the most important thing you know even if you're playing rock or whatever you call it you know if it connects that's the most important thing you know? music is in itself is is very large for it to be confined to to uh, to a narrow pocket invented by a human mind for example the word genre i am probably not a very big fan of this genreism and you know just classifying bands i think but it's important at the day also because if i tell you that our music is bob marley jamming with a ball singer when he's high on some substance you it would at least make you curious because more and more everybody is influenced by everything and yet when they make their music they don't want to sound like other people they want to sound different so that's why it becomes more and more difficult to say who belongs to what genre there are n genres they're going to keep expanding and we're going to keep getting confused and we're going to all put it under contemporary indian music at one point of time i wanted to be a professional dancer uh in fact then my father quashed it <laughs> brilliantly i'm a very limited musician that way i've never trained myself in music it's the rest of the musicians who make it, make me look good on stage actually <laughs> it's more like like a constantly evolving sound really uh, not really getting stagnant with one particular set of musicians or set of sounds but instead keep the doors open for new people to walk in add their colors and sounds and textures kodagana kodi nikita kodagana kodi nikita western world has known india music indian music only in its three glorious forms one is sitar and tabla and then you have bollywood and then you have bhangra so people are very surprised when we go to our broad music festivals call ourselves indian music band and then have these complete rock band setup of bass guitar electric guitar acoustic guitar and then a violin and a drummer and then play music which is completely indian and then but with rhythms which they can really understand and <laughs> music or the roots that we have in our country take it in a form that is acceptable to the younger generation so 
we are lively on stage. We crack jokes. We jump around. But we are singing about serious stuff. The music is fun. Our body language is fun. Eh? I discovered this poet named Santa Shishunala Sharifa. He used to use these words which are very funny, quirky and at the same time explaining some really huge philosophical message through those funny simple words. <laughs> songs, yuppie, uh, contemporary sound, which a rocker kid will probably come and headbang, but at the same time say, Shanta Shishnala Sharifa rocks, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the audience reacts to it from a very emotional point of view. So if something is honest and it's straight from the heart, I think the people will people will react to it. Everyone asks us, so you go to the UK and I'm, I'm sure you play English songs. I said, no, we, we play Kannada songs. This is a song again in my mother tongue. How do they uh, understand? I said, they don't, but we make it a point to explain what we're singing. Which basically, 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 basically means don't worry, be happy, but if you want to worry, I don't give a damn. The audience that is seeing that is identifying with that. They are saying that, you know what, I can also be proud of the fact that I'm from Rajasthan or from UP or whatever it is. They're basically saying, yeah, what the hell? And so the audience is loving this. They're loving the fact that they can listen to contemporary stuff being done in their own language and you can dance to it or you can follow the lyrics and you know, you have that pride in your own musicians. If it makes you happy about the fact that the sun is out on a cloudy day, there isn't really very much more that the lyrics can say than what you've already understood. Thank you guys. I can say this from my own experience, is that we are getting more comfortable in our skin. It will be almost impossible to, uh, you know, uh, pin down the exact reason. A lot has changed, I mean, for the better. I mean, the, the avenues, the venues, the uh, audiences have changed. There's this vibrancy in the way of music is made, in the way now music is going to be distributed, recorded, everything. Now, you see the studio size has shrunk. I think it's the economic confidence of the country. I also think it's the fact that so many of our Indians today are truly global citizens. Spot on. I mean, that's, that's what's happening. There's an explosion, you know. All sorts of Indian sound or Southeast Asian sounding, South Asian sounding bands are doing quite well. Eh? It's the right time uh, for India to showcase itself, uh, the way it's becoming globalized, becoming modern and, and at the same time holding on to its roots and therefore having its own identity, you know. So all kinds of stuff.
of contributing to this move where the assertion of your own cultural identity is very very strongly and definitely made and if the rest of the world doesn't want to listen to us too bad we play our own stuff you like it you like it you don't like it too bad hello check check hey hey thoda aur hello hello aur check monitor pe thoda sa i have never given it a thought yaar i i cannot answer this question what is music to me i don't know what it is to me i can't explain it in words but it's something that um, is i don't know how to i can i can answer it in one line saying it's it's just my way of life maybe but then that's also not my way of life so <laughs> i really don't know what the answer to this question is yeah it's like a it's it's a it's a journey music is a journey